I'm sure many of you watching this have seen my other video on the convict William Buckley who lived with the Waterong people, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, in Victoria for over 32 years. A commenter on that video recently told me of another such case of a convict living with the Aboriginals and I thought I have to cover it not only given the popularity of the last video but also my personal interest in these things. So cheers for that Dave and with all this out of the way let's get straight into the incredible story of Richard Craig. Richard Craig was the son of William Craig and was born in Ireland sometime in 1812. When he was merely 8 years old his father was sentenced to 7 years transportation to Australia. In the face of this sentence and contrary to usual procedure, Richard would end up sailing with his father to New South Wales as a free person. He finally arrived in Sydney at the age of 9 on the 9th of January 1821, although I suppose there's a pretty high chance he was actually still 8 given it's unclear what his date of birth was. Regardless of his age though, he managed to settle down in this strange new land with his father. They would end up having to move once more when in 1825 Richard's father William was convicted of cattle stealing and was sentenced to serve three years in the penal settlement of Port Macquarie about 400 kilometres or 250 miles north of Sydney. This move wouldn't be all bad though as during this time Richard came to know the surrounding countryside and made friends with the local Burpai people even learning their language which is quite impressive in my opinion given how incredibly different English and all the Aboriginal languages are. After his father's sentence was complete, it appears they returned to Sydney and worked as butchers until, on the 2nd of July, 1828, William and Richard both were charged with stealing five head of cattle from a herd at Richmond. On the 15th of September that same year, William was sentenced to 14 years on Norfolk Island and Richard, despite only being 16 years old at the time, was sentenced to death. He wouldn't actually end up being executed though, as his sentence was commuted to seven years hard labour in chains at Moreton Bay, a bit north of modern day Brisbane, under Captain Patrick Logan. He arrived at Moreton Bay to serve his sentence on the 24th of January 1829 alongside 136 other convicted felons. Turns out our now 17 year old friend was quite shifty though and escaped twice in 1829, being recaptured a considerable time after on both occasions. His first escape was in March, where he managed to elude capture for 12 days, which we'll come to find is quite a short amount of time for his standards. His second escape was on the 20th of September, in which he managed to evade the authorities for nearly two months, only being brought back to Moreton Bay on the 10th of November. Unfortunately for him, he would have to endure his punishment for over a year after this before he eventually managed his final escape on the 17th of December, 1830, now being 18 years old. Following his escape, he made an incredible journey south through the bush to what is now the Queensland New South Wales border and then through the New England area of northern New South Wales towards Port Macquarie where, if you remember correctly, he and his father had stayed briefly when Richard was a teenager. He would end up linking up with the local Bundjalung people in his travels along the Clarence River and stayed with them for roughly a year where he unsurprisingly became familiar with the surrounding country and rivers. Now, if you recall, Richard actually learned how to speak the language of the Burr Pie people when he was younger, which I believe would have aided him in communicating with the Bundjalung people. However, I don't think the languages spoken by the two tribes would have been mutually intelligible, as although they were part of the same language family, they were members of different branches, much like English and French in Europe. Perhaps someone more knowledgeable on this topic can provide some information in the comments, though. During Richard's stay with the Bundjalung people, it appears he moved south alongside the tribe before they eventually arrived at Port Macquarie, his intended destination, in late November 1831. Unfortunately, not much other than that is known about his stay with them though. Upon arrival in Port Macquarie and the departure of his Aboriginal friends, he gave an account of the rivers and rich grazing flats in northern New South Wales and also the sighting of escaped cattle. As a reward for this information, he was allowed to remain at Port Macquarie instead of being returned to Moreton Bay and was allowed to go into private service. In the following years, he would eventually be pardoned and worked as a guide for many years along the Clarence River area, using his extensive knowledge of their area to earn a living by not only guiding individual contractors, but also by helping clear paths for the government for future settlement. After guiding countless men through the thick bush for over 10 years, he eventually settled down and became the superintendent of a property in 1843 in Eatonsville along the Clarence River, but by 1855 he had returned to his family trade and that of his father, becoming a butcher once more. Sadly, Richard Craig would die on the 14th of July 1855 in Grafton from complications arising from a fall from a horse. 
He left behind his wife, Annie Baker, alongside six sons and one daughter, as well as this incredible story of his. Well, that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thanks again to Dave for informing me of this incredible story. But, with all that being said, as always, I hope you guys have a great day, night, wherever you are, and I hope to see you lovely people in the next one.